Hey everyone, Dominic the Primetime Treasure Hunter here. Welcome back. It is day three of flood recovery. I'm going to give you an update in just a moment and tell you where we go from here. Uh, but before I do that, I want to thank all of you for just being so supportive during this time, whether it was leaving a supportive comment uh, in response to the prior video or in my Facebook group, the Facebook Reselling Resource Center or on my Instagram account at prime underscore time underscore treasure. Uh, thanks so much. Whether it was hitting the like button, whatever it was that you did. Some people sent me private messages. I appreciate that. Some people even made a supportive purchase in my store. I mean, I didn't expect that, but uh, thank you. No matter what it was that you did, it is really and truly the primetime family. I've always used that term and it you know, definitely, uh, I felt the love. So I just want to, uh, again, thank you all for that. I really appreciate it. So um, you could see that I am standing underneath this exposed ceiling. And one of the things that I told you in the prior video is that we've got to figure out what to do here. And I really want to get rid of it. I don't like it. It's long been something I've wanted to do. So this situation has just forced my hand to do something about it. I don't want to just replace the tile. So it was either I was going to replace it with something fancier or Mrs. Primetime actually had um, a good idea. Not that that's surprising, but I'm just saying she had a very good idea. I think we'll see if it'll work when the contractor comes over. But one of the things that she said was, well, maybe we could just get rid of this whole drop down ceiling totally and just expose the top of it and just give it like an industrial look. So I ran the idea by my contractor who has done awesome work for me before. He did our whole kitchen, he did my deck and lots of other work in the house here, including some down here, like installing the slop sink and stuff when we needed it replaced. And um, he said that a lot of people are doing that now. They're getting rid of these drop ceilings and they're just, um, you know, spray painting the top of the ceiling black and just, um, you know, giving themselves some more space. So that would be good because they do need more space down here. I talked to him about maybe installing some shelving and stuff. So we'll see. He's going to come over tomorrow. So I'll give you the update in terms of uh, what he says. So that is that. And um, I did, um, as I mentioned in a prior video, but I realized everyone probably didn't get to it because it was towards the end. And so a lot of people were saying, contact your home and uh, homeowner's insurance. And, you know, this is something you can make a claim for. And, you know, you have to make sure you have documentation. I actually did talk about that towards the end of the video. So yes, I do have the uh, insurance company coming over on Tuesday. And so we'll see what happens with that. And I'll give you uh, an update. Of course, I would have to exceed the deductible in terms of reimbursable expenses. So Eh, we'll see. I don't know. We'll see what happens. Um, okay, so what are we going to do from here? I have two goals. People ask me about a dehumidifier. I've talked about this in prior videos, but I do have a dehumidifier running in here all the time. Uh, I have one in the other room as well. Uh, this dehumidifier, I absolutely love it by Frigidaire. That's why I have two of them. I have a link to it down below in my description section. If you want to see, um, you know, the link for this to Amazon, it's an Amazon affiliate link. But I, I love it. I researched all the dehumidifiers and this is the best one I came up with. So normally what I do is I, uh, you know, take the water out. I think it's 70 pints, so it's a lot of water. And I always dump it off into the slop sink here. Well, the problem is that the slop sink became an area where I started moving. Actually, Mrs. Primetime put it on there. We had all the glassware up here, and so she moved it into there. So my goal today is to get all this out of here so I could dump the water out. And uh, then my second goal is to clear all this out. I told you, I don't want these comic books in here. And there's other things in here besides comic books and stuff. There's just miscellaneous stuff. See, stuff just falls over. I can't have this anymore. This has got to just go. So uh, I think this is going to go into the shed and uh, we're going to work on this. Just give me some more space. So uh, let's get to work and see how we do. It's funny, I'm pulling stuff out of this sink and uh, I come across this nice vintage peanuts mug and I thought of Mary McQueen who recently shouted me out and a bunch of other YouTubers on the Dave Ramsey show. So uh, go follow Mary. You'll see her all over my comment section. She loves peanuts, so I just figured I'd show this to her. But um, anyway, thanks a lot, Mary. Now, here's something interesting I did not know. When styrofoam gets wet, it 
becomes really mushy, kind of like marshmallow almost. I mean, it, it's like liquidy and stuff. It's, it's gross, but that's what happens when it gets wet. I never actually checked that out before, which reminds me of something else I have to tell you. All right, well, I didn't mention this in the prior video, but what I'm gonna tell you right now was something that just added to the craziness and just the significant frustration that I was having that day. Like, if it wasn't bad enough, I'm going up, I'm taking these ceiling tiles down and stuff, and one of the things that I forgot was that we had a mouse trap up there. And so I stick my hand up. Now, fortunately, it's not the one that snapped down. It's the one that has the bed of rubber cement glue and my hand goes right into it. And if you've ever touched that stuff before, I mean, it is like, it's so hard to get that stuff off. So my hand is like, it looks like there's like mozzarella cheese like pouring down from it. Like that's how ridiculous it was. And then I tried to, you know, get some of it off with the other hand, which just stuck my hands together basically. I mean, I was able to pull them apart, but now they're both basically covered in this cement stuff. And I'm trying to get it off, trying to get it off. I can't. And Mrs. Primetime made dinner in the middle of this just so we could eat. And so I go up there. I've got cement all over my hands. And I'm trying to figure out some way to get this off. And I couldn't. And so the only thing I thought to do, which is a little tip that I've used and shared before, of how to get the sticky residue off of, um, you know, to come from like price labels and stuff, how to get it off. I just took a bunch of peanut butter rubbed it all over my hands and it took that stuff off, but it was so stressful and uh, that just reminded me of it. So I wanted to make sure I told you that. All right, well, as you could hear, my dehumidifier is running. First task accomplished. This is now cleared out and this is running, emptied. So we're all set to go. So I'll turn that back on in a moment. But uh, that was just a real easy thing I just wanted to get done. Uh, the reason why I'm not doing a ton of stuff today is because this is actually my first day uh, back to work in terms of at the hospital. And so uh, I'm going to be starting that back up again. I've been doing remote work for, you know, three to four months now. So um, I'm going to have to get back into a whole new routine of things for how I'm managing things over here. So uh, anyway, um, a lot of you asked me about if I lost anything that was listed and I didn't. The reason why is because I keep all of my listed inventory separate from that room there. So all my listed inventory is right over here. So I am good to go in this section. So uh, everything um, that I had listed um, was was fine, no problems there. Uh, speaking of things that are listed and things that actually sold, I've had a bunch of good sales lately, uh, including two today. Uh, some of you may remember me picking out this dictionary set here. You may remember me sourcing it. It's supposed to have a magnifying glass in here, but it's missing. But the books are actually in good shape. Normally when people find this set, um, is really a lot of damage to it. Now it does have some damage to it. You can see there's a slice over here, um, but, that sold for $70, um, just amazing. I picked that up for peanuts at the end of an estate sale. I think people left it there because there was no magnifying glass and there was that slice in it. But here's just a tip. If you see oversized, um, you know, really big uh, either sets or individual dictionaries that are just giant like that, like the unabridged type, and they're from like the 70s or earlier, even maybe some from the 80s, pick them up because people love them. You could usually get them for a buck or a couple bucks and they usually sell for somewhere in the $50 range. Uh, and sometimes higher, as you could see there, $70. Another thing that's sold today, which is great for an individual comic book, is this one. I showed it recently uh, when I sourced it in a big lot. This is a I Lucifer. Uh, it's by Mulehide Graphics. Now, this one is from 1991, so it's not super old, but this one sold today for $87.50. Now, interesting thing about this, this is by uh, Drew Hayes, by the way, so uh, he, he's popular and people like his works. Um, you know, these books, some of them had low print runs, so that's one of the things that drives the price up for them. I've got uh, um, several others of them in my store right now, but one of the things to know is that the name I Lucifer was something that was causing problems in retail stores. So they didn't want to carry it because parents were complaining that the name, you know, sounded like Lucifer, the devil. So at issue number eight, and I could 
show it to you over here. Let's see, that's I lose for three. Here we go. Issue number eight, they they changed the title to Poison Elves. And so for that reason, uh, issue number eight, which is actually the first issue of Poison Elves, um, it is worth a little bit more than uh, some of the other Poison Elves books because this is the first time uh, it actually used that title as a, a title change. So just a little history uh, there. Uh, some of this stuff I just find really interesting. So uh, anyway, so uh, now I'm going to move on to the next task, which is, uh, like I said, clearing out uh, this whole area over here. And then um, we'll take it from there. You know, I actually forgot before I move those comic books, I need to find a spot to put that glassware that I took out of the slop sink and I don't want to keep it uh, down there. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to list this uh, big giant Van Helsing doll, the seven foot tall monster that you saw recently. So I told you this thing goes for like $200. I got it for $10 at the garage sale. So I'm just going to list this and that will free up some space right here and I can Put that other glassware for now. All right, so I've got the monster listed and Retro Dottie, uh, YouTube subscriber, wanted me to list this Jim Kelly shirt, which I uh, found recently, in fact, last weekend. So this is gonna go up today. And um, let me show you this here. You know this long table, I've shown it before. It doesn't normally look like this, right? Well, the reason it does, and I'll expand out a little bit more, like all this stuff came out from that uh, part of the basement that was flooded. We needed a place to put stuff. And so um, this is just stuff we've got to work through. Now, I actually bought this recently from Heather Richards in my Facebook group, but uh, everything else out here is stuff that we had to move over. Oh, and I bought this from uh, Jason Purvis, and uh, he's got a cool... Uh, eBay store as well called Jabby's Treasures. So you should go uh, check him out. He's a really cool guy, really supports the Facebook group. Okay, so uh, everything else though is stuff that uh, I need to list. So one of the things that I am listing, this is one of my coolest uh, recent comic book acquisitions. Um, this is a comic book called Battle. It's number 45 and it was made by Atlas Comics in 1956. And it has a grade of 5.5, so it's a mid-grade because these grades go up to 10. You can see it's graded and certified by CGC. This is actually the highest grade that this has ever received from CGC. So it's the single highest grade, in fact. So no other issue of this has ever been graded higher than that. So I'm going to get this photographed and uh, listed as well. Daisy, what are you doing? You watching Ms. Primetime on the barbecue out there? Yeah? <laughs> what are you doing? Oh boy. Hope she doesn't burn the house down. Here's the glassware, by the way, so good to get that out of the slop sink. Daisy, are you playing with your bunny again? Where are you going? Oh, are you sneaking upstairs? Where are you going? Where are you going? <laughs> what are you doing? What are you doing? Get back down those stairs. Get back down those stairs. Get down there. Get down those stairs. There you go. Show everyone how you go down the stairs. Who's that? Who's at the front door? Who's that? Who's that? Who's that? <laughs> Works every time. <laughs> All right, well, I already knocked out a box of, turned out to actually be vintage horse magazines that were right over here. So those are in the shed. But I figured while I'm here, and clearing this stuff out, I might as well do something with all these mostly Masters of the Universe figures that I have here. So I've got this here, which has always been a pain. I can't tell you how many times I have bumped into this crate. So very annoying. Uh, then we have this one here, which sometimes I can find it, sometimes I can't. So this is the problem with separating them. And I figured take them out, bunch them together and put them in here, which will free some room from uh, the upstairs because this was underneath the table and then I said you know what I could also do my first dive into here because these are all masters of the universe pieces and these have just been buried down here for a long time look at this so I can take these out and get them in there as well and just so you know you don't even need masters of the universe pieces to be complete you could just sell these as replacement parts and people buy them 
How did you enjoy your flood, prime time? <laughs> Get out of here. <laughs> now, sometimes I'm coming across some figures that are not masters of the universe. This is a sector, and you could tell that because he's got these little insect antennas coming uh, off the top of his head there. And of course, over there, we've got Lino from Thundercats, which you could always recognize here from the uh, cat symbol uh, right over there. So, you know, it's always fun just going through this stuff. You never know what you're going to come across. You know, and this is why things have to be consolidated because you can see over here, this is the attack track and it has these wheels here, these purple wheels, they snap in and out. And there's two on the other side, got this one here, but I did have this one and I was wondering where the heck it was. And sure enough, there it is. There's the other wheel, just snap right in. Now it's complete. But with everything being scattered, this is the kind of stuff that uh, kind of stuff that happens. Now, if you ever wondered what Orko looked like without his hat, here he is. When I was a kid, we used to call him Dorko because he's so annoying in the uh, actual series. Uh, look at this. It turns out that this box actually got wet on the bottom. Look at that. It just pokes right through. So there's some. Um, lingering evidence there of some water damage so I'm glad I'm getting rid of this box because this would just stink things up it wouldn't damage the characters but uh, still not good having that down here and this is just a shout out to any masters of the universe fans out there who of you remember the smell of moss man when you're a kid I used to sniff this doll all the time I love this doll the smell of it was amazing he smelled like this piney smell like they sprayed onto him it's awesome you can't smell it anymore because he's too old but oh my god if you used to love taking a whiff of moss man back in the day let me know all right so perfect i eliminated all those boxes uh so i got three boxes down into one big uh tubby area so i mean this is awesome i could just put this in the shed uh, put the lid on it right there. I know everything's all in one place. Uh, I suggest keeping the accessories separate because they're just going to fall off and then be hard to find. So um, this is Triclops, by the way. I want to shout him out because he was one of my favorites when I was a kid. And I just love his face. He just looks real badass. And uh, he's got that like Ivan Drago kind of look on his face like, I will break you. So I <laughs> think he's awesome. So I've got him. I've broken uh, some other toys out here that were in there. So I've got um, uh, like WWF, WWE wrestlers here, like Andre the Giant, Demolition. And these are some DC superheroes down there. And then just like some random things like Sully and stuff. So they're just kind of like scattered about. But uh, the main thing is this, and this is a nice accomplishment. All right, I did it. I moved all that stuff out of there into the shed in terms of... Uh, all the comic books. So I'll show you a little bit of additional content in here now. So you can see there's some more stuff on the floor here uh, that was added. And I put another box there. I moved my Sesame Street Playhouse over here, or Clubhouse, I should say. Uh, I used to have this when I was a kid. I used to play with it all the time. So shout out to those of you who did as well. Um, when um, Mrs. Primetime came in here yesterday for the first time, and saw uh, just how much progress was made and just saw what this looked like. She was like, that's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. Like, that's what she always thought this space would be. So, um, you know, I'm excited. I really feel good. Um, uh, what a difference a couple of days makes. So I'm going to show you, um, just to wrap up, what it looks like uh, in the basement now because, boy, it's just um, it's much less stressful down there. So let me show you. All right, are you ready? All right, I'm gonna turn this camera around and show you what it looks like behind me now. So there we go, all open space. How awesome is that? I mean, it has been years since I have been able to have any kind of open space, and I mean many years. So uh, that's what I mean about it just being less stressful now. I at least have some room to walk around. Uh, I came across some interesting things when I was going through those comic books. Someone had reached out to me on YouTube recently asking me uh, if I still had this Schoenfeld catalog and I just couldn't find it and it was right in one of those comic boxes. So I will list this for him this weekend if he's uh, still watching, if he uh, is checking out this channel, make sure that you let me know down in the uh, comment section. Otherwise, I'll try to track you down 
in another way. But uh, there it is, it's a great shape. And I came across uh, some other things that were interesting. I'm gonna show you all these, of course, got a little Playboy in there, of course. <laughs> So, uh, no, but I've got some heavy metal magazines. Um, you know, they usually have the ladies on there. But the reason I point this out is because I have a stash of heavy metal magazines that I am going to be uh, listing very soon. And so these are just some extra ones that I found. So these are just going to get added to the lot. And, uh, you know, otherwise I would have sold off that lot and these wouldn't have been in there. So, all right, that's good. Got them. All right, everyone. Well, that's it for this video. Uh, we'll see what happens tomorrow. Uh, I just feel great. You just got to be able to make a little bit of visible progress each day. Uh, and I was able to do that here. And so um, I'm excited going forwards. I can't wait to document this transformation with you. And, um, you know, we'll just see where it goes from here, like I said. So uh, thanks a lot for watching the video. Uh, make sure you give it a big thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Uh, make sure you subscribe if you are new. And of course, comment down below if there's something you'd like to add or a question that you have or something like that. So uh, till the next video, everyone. Take care.